Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Army condemns violence under Simon Ekpa and urges global action. The Nigerian army has strongly condemned the brutal treatment of innocent citizens, including a retired ex-corporal, Tirola Adewale, by the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, and the Biafra Liberation Army. The army has called on international organizations such as Amnesty International and the International Criminal Court to hold Simon Mon Ekwa and other IPOB leaders accountable for these heinous crimes. Um, now, joining us to discuss this is we have a guest. Um, also, I would just like to add that the Nigerian army has also urged Nigerians to stand um, united against IPOB's terrorism. But joining us right now to discuss this is Emmanuel Ikule, is an executive director at Elixir Trust Foundation. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Yes, good morning. Thank you for having me. All right, fantastic. Okay, so I think I would like just like to start by, you know, asking we've we've seen what's happening in the in the in the south, right? In the east, the southeast um, of Nigeria. And there's just been a lot because we're hearing of, of people being killed, we're hearing of, of sit at home, we're hearing of so many things that's going on. But I wanna just I wanna ask that you give us a brief overview on what's happening and, and how you know we've, it has led up to where we are today. Okay, uh, when you try to look at the situation in Southeast, it's more than just a, a one-off thing of uh, just the current happening of uh, maybe the IPOP group trying to uh, hurt somebody. It's more than just that. Southeast generally have been excluded from a lot of things, mm. from access to leadership, access to opportunities in the country at large. And this has uh, been long since uh, the, the, the time of independence till date, from the time of civil war till date. And in trying to address issues like this, it requires more than just a condemnation. It requires a dialogue because a lot of their leaders actually have not been happy at the way things have been. This has been years, not just 10 years, 20 years, 30, but this is about 50 years or more. And they are excluded from a lot of things. The young persons are suffering. And also, if you look at the way and manner that the army or the military have handled interventions in Southeast, it has not been similar to the way they have handled issues with even Boko Haram. There have been a lot of killings, be the military killing young persons and referring to them as IPOP leaders. No law permits killing of citizens. Yeah. So it's not because maybe other persons are torturing people that it becomes a crime. And when, when the military tortures people, it's allowed. That is not so. Administration of Criminal Justice Act, uh, Anti-Torture Act of 2017, actually prohibits all forms of torture. Even in times of war, torture is being prohibited. So, but this, when you come to Nigeria, these things have been happening over and over again. We cannot count the number of persons that have been murdered by the military in Southeast. So certainly when this thing continue happening and reoccurring, certainly the people at one time or the other may also get tired of being abused and they may start to find ways to actually retaliate in one form or manner. So for me, I'm saying that this has happened a lot of years. A lot of their leaders, Southeast leaders have complained, lead and traditional religious and all that have complained over, over time. But the federal government have not actually try to actually address this concern. Most times it has just been army intervention in those areas. And when you you, you overlook a lot of uh, dialogue, a, a lot of things that should have been done, I move straight to army intervention in such an area. It only becomes problematic. So for me, a lot of things have happened there. A lot of killings, a lot of um, uh, denial of resources, access to leadership, a lot of exclusion, even when uh, just a lot of things have happened over time. Mm. So in addressing such situations, there are better ways. Dialogue must happen. And if those things, because even the IPOP groups and the rest, they have also been maybe some requests at one time or the other, they have to be a dialogue to be able to address these concerns. Because war and every time using force will not be a solution in this particular case because it has lingered too long. 
and if the military has not been able to address it this way, then it means they have to be an other way, an alternative way so what are of those, addressing this concern. What are, do you think that they've never, you know, sat down to have this dialogue? What ways do you think that would be effective when it comes to addressing these concerns? Because these are people's lives we're talking about. And if we're talking about the South East, I'm sure there are also people who are from there that have been killed as well. A lot of times you hear of these killings and the people who are who are from these states. So why is why are they not listening or who's not doing the right thing here when it comes to you know addressing the concerns of the people that has obviously led to um, you know IPOP doing all of these heinous crimes? Okay, over the years there have been complaints of um, I said earlier about explosion in leadership. Yeah. yeah. This has been a major concern. Why? have uh, why has there been a uh, opportunity for somebody from southeast to lead when you are talking about the three major tribes you are talking about Igbo, yoruba and hausa then why is it that Igbo and consistently even those in leadership the comments they have made concerning people allowing those from southeast to lead has not actually been welcoming to some years so for me yes at one time or the other there are certain times you you, you hold an event but people look at it like more like a political affair than mm -hmm. seeing the sincerity of people in it. So for me, if the government really is serious, the federal government should sit. Even with Simon uh, Epa and other people, they have things, reasons why they are doing what they are doing. It may be bad, but to them may be appealing. So at one time or the other, there have been terrorists. I, I know uh, there have been one time or that that they have uh, arrested terrorists in the north. They have no, many times they have given things like amnesty to some persons in the great trade and ter terrorists and criminals in the north. There are times they have done similar to south uh, south uh, south, uh, south, uh, south south. I feel it's high time the federal government also try to rework things. Sit with the governors. They every. Every community has leadership, has gatekeepers. Be it religious, be it traditional, be it uh, police, po political, they should sit. Even if it's, 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 it's a private meeting, this has to happen. And then, maybe find terms of agreement or how to resolve this issue. Nigeria is for everybody. It's not just for some persons. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, Unfortunately, the military have been able to go for peacekeeping in other areas and in other countries and have observed certain standards of intervention. But as regards intervention in some areas, particularly in Southeast, it has not been according to standard. That's why I started by saying there have been a lot of killings. Yes, there have been also counter responses from people living in those areas, or should I say from IPOP, but there are better ways of doing things. When you go to the field, if you are fighting, having an engagement with terrorists and you kill them in the process is a different issue. But in the situation where people are moving about their normal businesses or you go into people's house, arrest them and murder them, certainly you'll be expecting that there will certainly be a form of counter, a form of counter um, attacks from such persons. So in this particular case, I suggest that you have a sit down with the federal government. They have a sit down with the traditional uh, rulers, the gatekeepers, and have a common um, what should be acceptable and what shouldn't be. If that happens to a large extent, some of these concerns will be addressed. Because it's not everybody that welcomes the issue or what has been happening there. Generally, nobody is happy with killings of uh, citizens. Nobody. So if that step can be done, that will be able to uh, come next. At the same time, if opportunities really like employment, opportunities and all that and if they can also be uh, stopped uh, the criminalization of people from southeast it will go a long way of saying that yes we are being excluded from access to resources but now because of this that we have opportunities now that we can aspire to whatever position we wish for in this country and we can be accepted then if it gets to at that level there will be no need i believe there will be no need for it for begin because what they are advocating for access to leadership, access to resources will already be available to them. Okay, so they want the access to leadership, access to resources, um, you know, equal opportunities, but should violence be the way to make your voices heard? 
I, I, I would understand that, you know, everybody wants a fair deal for themselves. But is that the best way to go about this? Because we're saying that, okay, maybe the military, they're not having the proper dialogue with them. But in the first case scenario, should IPOB use violence? Isn't that, you know, threatening, using terrorism to threaten, threaten the peace of the nation? Meanwhile, of course, the, the government is trying to keep the peace. So, uh, there is proper way of doing things. Right. Just like I said earlier, the government have faulted in their intervention in Southeast. Then secondly, yes, what the IPOB is doing is wrong. It shouldn't even be in the first place. But when people in a particular area have been marginalized for a long period of time, it may get to that point where they have to sort other means of defending themselves. This has happened also for other locations, be it like North Central, hmm. that consistently, if you look at, you, you, you tend to also fault the intervention of military in the, those areas, where maybe because of one attack, they go and burn down a whole village. The military shouldn't be doing that. They should be going for peacekeeping or trying to resolve issues in area, especially when it's within the country. But when those interventions happen, and those people that are supposed to be like protectors have become predators, it gets to that point where you start looking at alternative means of defending yourself. Mm. Because you reach out to the police, the police are saying the military, then it's government, uh, government permission. Government has permitted intervention in such areas. You reach out to the military, they are the ones carrying out intervention of killing or carrying out uh, torturing people in the southeast. So when you try to look at the security agencies that you should be reporting to in cases of uh, when your rights have been abused, when the government, the failure of the government to carry out interventions, when it has failed and then you are reaching out to those that should be protecting you, they are the ones that are predators in this case. It gets to that particular point that even your leaders complain that the government is failing to help you instead of they're punishing you. Then within yourself, you have to find a way to help yourself. It's the wrong means, but this is where we are at this particular point in time. And for these issues to be addressed, they have to be a sit-down. Because consistent killing, a, a house that fights itself cannot stand whenever there's an external uh, invasion. That is why issues like Boko Haram will continue to persist. Because within, we have not been, uh, there's no unity within the country. Be it the intervention of um, security agencies in, in certain locations. Let's not forget that before uh, even independence, when they during colonial times, there was what they called, should I say, martial tribes or thereabout, where you, you, you put tribes that you know normally they are at crossroad against each other. So you carry people from the north to come and police the south, you carry the south to go and police the north. Those interventions or those type or archaic intervention has still persisted till date. And if you are thinking about unity and thinking about saving lives, then they have to be sit down, especially when you want to seek peace. And when the people you are coming to them in the aim of uh, intervention see sincerity of peoples from your intervention, they will be forced to work with you. But people are even scared that even if they give intel to you of such interventions, you go back and still point them out and they will still become suspect in cases like this. Mm -hmm. Interventions like this have also happened in Yobe. When citizens came out to report to the police and military that there are certain persons that are involved in, in, in Boko Haram and the rest, and still the same persons were arrested and freed the same days, and they went back and murdered their fellow wow. relatives because they reported them. Just some weeks back, there were still bodies being still carried and mm. told about 100 in vehicles in Yubi because of what? So these are similar situations. Right. If we really want to be sincere, then we have to disassociate ourselves, first of all, from criminals, I mean security agencies. And then in working in areas, they should work not because of personal hatred for a particular tribe or personal grudges they have in the past, maybe by leaders, because sometimes they are used to push agenda by, by the uh, leadership, those in leadership. So there must be a sit-down to address situations like this.
Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you because on one hand, if you're being abused, you definitely want to defend yourself. Obviously, violence is not the case, it's not the way to go. But we just hope that the military, all of our security agencies, they're ensuring that these people are safe. You know, um, uh, the safety of, of the citizen is imperative for everyone and we hope that you know even people who are in government are giving the equal opportunities to these people so that they don't feel marginalized and they don't now you know take take hands or take action when it comes to terrorism and criminality because at the end of the day all we just want is a very peaceful Nigeria and hopefully we'll get that we're seeing what's happening in the north we're seeing what's happening in the southeast now there's just a lot going on but hopefully we'll become one Nigeria again and everybody would live together happy for a long time all right Emmanuel I want to say thank you so much for coming it was so nice discussing this with you thank you Yes, that is what we are praying for, and hopefully we'll get there. Amen. Amen to that. Thank you so much. All right, so we're speaking with Emmanuel Ikule. He's the executive director of Elysia Trust Foundation. And we've just been talking about the violence in the Southeast, and the army, you know, obviously has condemned that violence. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having a breakfast with me. And happy Eid El Malud to all of our Muslim brothers and sisters once again. I'll see you again tomorrow. My name is Rumer Paulson. Have an amazing day.